Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome here for the first time, but nonetheless, welcome to the Forgotten Manual. Today, we're going to play a fun little game inside of Operations, one of the biggest challenges we all face. And that challenge is overcoming alert fatigue. We're not going to completely solve the, the problem of alert fatigue, but we're going to raise visibility and awareness on it. So that way, we can all certainly enjoy here. <coughs> so I hope you guys enjoy on this. Let me get a little, little drawing lines around. Let's draw some boxes, right? So where I want to focus on here is we're going to start right here in this little section called alerts. But we're not going to dig directly into the alerts per se. We're going to focus on the anatomy of an alert, right? Because what is an alert at the end of the day? And I will, uh, I'm gonna go there by going to the land of configure policies. That's how I'm gonna get there. And go pop in one of my policies and then hit edit. So for what it's worth, an alert is a combination of a series of symptoms. And those symptoms are a combination of a series of metrics, which is to say, if metric A triggers, uh, and it does it enough times, therefore we shall trigger this particular alert. That's basically what we're looking at, right? And as we get into that, I'm gonna say, hey, you notice our little caption down here at the bottom? It's gonna work well, or it's not gonna work well. Either way, I hope you guys take this moment to like and subscribe the video. You know you're already getting value out of it. We're more than a few seconds in. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe so we can keep going on with things. <coughs> and let's get these coughs out of the way, right? All right. So, we're gonna dig into our metrics, we're gonna dig into our alerts, we're gonna dig into our symptoms. We're not gonna go too deep on it because we're gonna focus on that which matters. And what I find the things that matter most are things that trigger that shouldn't and things that don't trigger but should. So the way we're gonna go in there is we're gonna start hitting alerts and symptoms. And what I like to do is always go over here, change my state to show me everything that's activated and deactivated because we're focused on policies here, right? So I'm gonna get an output here. It's gonna give me a list of all the different alerts and what they are, right? But in this particular case, what's the focus of this video? Alert fatigue, right? I'm gonna sort this twice. I'm gonna sort it that way and I'm gonna sort it back the other way and we're gonna go look at this. So what the first thing I'm noticing here is I have this virtual machines violating CIS. Uh, this is an active alert, so I've received 47 alerts of that. You notice how there's a, let me go draw, grab my little box, right? Let me go grab my little box there. Do you notice how I've got 47 different ones that are triggering on this, which means I have received 47 different alerts on this. And if I don't care about that, well, I should probably uh, do something about that. Maybe I can disable that particular alert. Well, it's in the same breath, you know what, maybe I don't care about violating CIS uh, you know, rules or whatever it is, but I do care about violating DISA, for example, and whoa, my DISA one is not enabled. So that kind of raises the question of, of, hey, maybe I want to go in and disable this one alert, you know, which is as easy as me grabbing my cursor again, as <laughs> easy as me going and grabbing that and then deactivating that policy. Or I go to this other one that's currently deactivated by inherited by policy and say, you know what? I actually not, I need that thing to be enabled. I'd like to go and activate that. But then I walk through the list of, of all these different ones. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Uh, ESXi host is violating this thing. That's activated. Uh, that's 40 alerts that I'm not going to do anything about. Or, or I am. Uh, hey, HIPAA is over here. Great. I'm a healthcare provider. I need to have these HIPAA ones. I'm not a healthcare provider. Let me go and disable this. What's nice about this is you have that flexibility because right now we're just looking at alert definitions and we can look at all of the alerts as themselves, right? Anything that's been triggered once or what have you. But right now I'm dealing with alert fatigue. I've got all these alerts and I'm like, there's some of them I don't care about. So I'm going to go and disable those alerts. And that's kind of the key here. It's not necessarily that we want to go pop over into system de symptom definitions and disable a lot of these ones, but we'll go take a look at which ones happen to be in here. I wouldn't necessarily encourage the active disablement of a symptom you know, per se. I would encourage the active enablement of something that is in fact disabled. So for example, hey, you know, 
what does that say? Or a grid file system less than a certain size. It's going to tell me about that. But yeah, it's storage core and storage DB. It's not telling me about that when it's over a, you know, it's a certain threshold. In fact, we're going to dig into that storage core for a second here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this entire thing and type, go here, type in storage core, and it's going to show me all of the alerts relevant to that. And I will say, do we, we get them from Skyline. That is absolutely awesome that we're getting this alerting reporting information from Skyline. However, if you don't have Skyline enabled, you don't have Skyline installed, or you have it enabled, you have it installed, but you don't have it integrated with VROPS, then I won't know about the health of my storage core because I never integrated my VROPS or RE operations over with Skyline, which that's a separate thing. Maybe you should go and enable your Skyline, but in the meantime, it naturally deactivates that particular policy because it thinks that you're getting that information from Skyline. So this is an important part of know what is enabled, but more importantly, know what is disabled, right? Because it'll be important. Let's just dig right into, again, we're only looking at symptoms at the moment, only looking at symptoms that are deactivated. So I can get a sense of, oh, I, I want to know my boot file system is over this particular threshold, this particular metric. So I can dig into these areas. All right, now we're going to jump out of this completely because... There's the symptom definitions, there's the alerts, but again, everything is driven around the metrics that feed it. So I'm gonna go hit cancel, and I'm gonna pop here into metrics and properties. I will note, do you see this little number right there that says locally defined attributes, 192? And just like over here in alerts and symptoms, it says locally defined alerts, 146. You'll know if you have modified the base settings and you've enabled or disabled things that are outside of scope, because these values will say zero or they'll say near zero. We tweak some of the stuff inside of our environment, which is why our numbers have grown. So what I love about here is, again, if I don't know entirely what I'm looking for, I'm gonna go grab my state and show me everything, right? I wanna go look at everything that is enabled and everything that is disabled. And it's gonna give me a slightly different view from the way we had in the other page. <coughs> What I like about this is I have everything broken down, but do you see this? Let me go grab a little arrow again. I love to highlight that. Do you see this little box here? That one right there, right? That is my, that is my best friend when I'm doing these things. So where is my arrow? My God. Okay, that little box right there, that is now your best friend because that is exactly how you're going to be using this. So I'd say, oh, uh, I want to look at all of the enabled and disabled alerts inside of cluster compute resource. I could go, let's click metrics, and let me go click badge, and like that's what you could do. Ah, uh, Christopher ain't got time for that. I go click this, and it's going to expand all. And that's amazing, because while there's a lot of green stuff, oh, okay, effective CPU resource megahertz is deactivated by default. Do I care about that one? All right, let's go find something else that's uh, deactivated. Let's see here. How about overall CPU contention by milliseconds? Like, whew. And I, you notice how I'm hovered over this thing, and it's it's got this little pop-up there that says, hey, that's what that thing is. For some items, it will it, it will just say the word, overall CPU contention mega, uh, milliseconds. But on this one, it says how much vCPU you have allocated in percentage based on one-to-one -one allocation, no overcommit. So it's very powerful to hover over certain uh, metrics because you may get better data. Look at that, workload balance factor equals workload balance factor. But workload percent is a demand over usable capacity, whereas applicable demand includes limit and contention. Is that what I said, limit and contention? Yes, there we go, limit and contention. That is absolutely awesome because if you didn't know that, now you do, right? Now you'll know that sometimes it's gonna give you a more longer explanation. Demand megahertz and there's more words, there, right? So it's something that you can immediately take advantage of, right? So as we go down the line, again, these are all of our metrics. We're gonna jump into virtual machine because chances are that's one of the areas you're gonna care most about. Oh no! It minimized everything again. Let's go expand all. And here we go. Now we're able to go and look at all of the stuff, right? And I will note, we can search for specific object and object types like we have there. Inside here, we can do a similar type of search 
you know, we could do a search for like, hey, let's look for demand over limit, right? We're gonna go do a search for demand over limit. Now, A, we're gonna get some results and it's just gonna be pod and virtual machine here, which we can then respectively expand. But there's another way we can do this. We can also say, hey, show me demand over limit for all of the states. Right, or only the ones that happen to be activated or something like that. So you can have a conditional search inside of here that, that gives you one search plus an extra search. And you'll know, hey, minimize everything again. Let me go click virtual machine and you click expand. Hey, there's my demand over limit megahertz, right? We're getting that data there that we can immediately take advantage of. But we're gonna get rid of demand over limit and we're gonna look at all the states again because that's what we're here for, right? So, Ignoring that little thing at the bottom. Okay, we're going to open up virtual machine again. We're going to expand all of our metrics and we're going to see while there are a number of metrics in here that are activated by default, chances are you're probably not going to deactivate a metric per se because there may, in most cases you're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You are currently monitoring that today. Continue monitoring that tomorrow. But there may be a number of metrics in here that you're, that you're saying, like, uh, let's go find some of these nice disabled ones. Um, overall, yeah, like that one. Overall CPU contention milliseconds. You're like, I, I, I want that. Actually, let me go and enable that. Let's go activate that one. And then I will say, I changed that. It has this little red thingy on it now. And it won't save until I hit save. So that's an important thing is when we're done changing really anything within a policy, we want to make sure that we save it. So I'm going to hit save because I want that one to save and it's going to bring me back out to the main screen. So I'm going to have to go click back on my metrics to go back inside here. You'll know why didn't it just save it and just leave me in there? Well, it didn't. So I just want you to not be disappointed and expecting that anything different is going to happen. That is what will happen. So that's okay. We know that. We can go and make a bunch of different changes and then get back inside here. So we're gonna go pack, pop back over into our virtual machine. We're gonna go back and expand all. And now we've got a lot of stuff in here. Huh? Look at that. CPU, uh, overall CPU con contention milliseconds is now active, right? And we, we've got stuff that we're able to do with this at this point. We can go through, you know, we've got items that are activated. Look at this one. Effective limit megahertz is activated but the instanced state for it is deactivated. So you can have an active metric that is not collecting. And that's the key. I just enabled that one, but I enabled it, but I didn't actually change the state of it. So it's technically not going to collect that. So let's go, uh, let's go back over to that one. Um, overall CPU contention, it was activated. Now I'm gonna change its instant state to collect. And now, when I hit save, we're gonna actually start collecting that metric, that information's gonna be popping in there. And hey, look, our local defined attributes have increased. So the key on all of this is we want to minimize our alert fatigue by doing things like deactivating alerts that we will never do anything about. That's the catch. If you get the alert and every time you ignore it, and, and maybe it, it's an alert that doesn't matter to you, but if you get alerts and every time you are choosing to just ignore it, then you probably should disable that particular one, right? We're gonna go and look at all the alerts for virtual machines. So we're looking by object type. So I've got all these different alerts. I can sort by state and what have you. But if I, uh, honestly, most of these I would keep, right? A CPU high on VM, guest mismatch. Let's see something over here on another page, right? Uh, Virtual machine, no, that's a deactivated one. Virtual machine has memory contention due to memory compression, ballooning, or swapping. I would 100% want to know that particular alert is happening. But, hey, violating CIS, okay, maybe I don't want that. Virtual machine is running on snapshots more than two days. I absolutely want to be alerted about that. Uh, I also then want to take advantage of Automation Central to do something about that, but that's a separate matter, you know, when you check out my other video around, uh, you know, ways to optimize your environment and using Automation Central. But as you go down the line and you check out the alerts that are triggering most for you, right? Look at this one. Virtual Machine is violating Risk Profile 1. It's happened 29 times. 
Uh, I didn't do anything about it today. I didn't do anything about it tomorrow. I'm not going to do anything about it the next day. Let's go and disable this particular alert. And then I can reduce my alert fatigue by 29. That's the key is getting yourself actionable alerts, things you're doing something about, and then doing something about those particular things. That's a very powerful thing in here. And sometimes it may come the case of, I need to modify the criteria for which this alert operates on, right? Uh, what do we have here? vCenter partition greater than 90% full. Let's go pop inside that thing. And that this thing is based upon a condition of, you know, uh, hey, if this thing is over 90% full. So we can go and find that particular symptom and then tweak it to say 90%, no, no, no. How about 95% or whatever? Like we have all these different attributes here, right? So I could actually increase that to say, hey, let's make that 95%. And then the state changes and we can go and, you know, tweak and modify and such, whether we're doing it within the alert or doing it within the symptom or what have you. And again, remember, everything is based upon metrics. That's the power on this. Metrics feed symptoms, symptoms feed alerts, alerts feed you a whole bunch of things that you need to do on a daily basis. At which point it then feeds in, yes, I wanna proceed. It feeds this whole big picture of different types of notifications and messages that are gonna pop up. So we're gonna break there. There's so much deeper and things we can go into, but there comes a time in our life that we need to stop. <coughs> so. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely go and give it a like and subscribe that you watched it. That's going to help me produce better and awesome, more awesome content and things like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll go a little deeper next time on some of uh, more of this. And if you have things you'd like to see deeper, definitely put it down in the, the comments below. So I will see you guys on the next one. And thank you for watching the Forgotten Manual.